back to another rendition of Byra Sports Talk, and of course, I'm your host, Byra, as you notice, some changes. Uh, I actually have a chair sitting on. <laughs> uh, just another angle of the room. I've been filming this one. And let's get started with some MLB. I know tonight the Yankees play the Twins. Uh, am I going to watch it? No. Am I going to try to keep an eye on it? Yes. Uh, I think the Yankees have the Twins. It is at the Yankees as the Yankees for the higher wild card seed. Yes, we're talking wild card baseball. We're already in the postseason for baseball. Isn't that awesome, everyone? Now, tomorrow night, which tomorrow, October 4th, is my wife's birthday, so I'd like to wish Carly Byro a happy birthday. Not going to give away anything else. Uh, anyways, moving on. Tomorrow night... The Rockies are at the Diamondbacks, which again, home field advantage to the Diamondbacks, the higher wild card seed. And then we talk actual who made it into the playoffs. Let's talk about these teams a little bit. So on the American League side, we got your Red Sox, your Indians, and your Astros. Now, we saw the Red Sox coming. Them and the Yankees have been neck and neck. The Indians pretty much ran away with it. Ended up beating Houston Astros for the top seed in the American League. Lead. Lead. There we go. Uh, the Astros just sort of coasted, as I predicted back when I started the show and talked about the Major League Baseball. Um, so, thoughts, I, of course, I know more about the Indians because it's the team I follow. Uh, I think they're the most set to advance to the World Series again, but you never know. It's the magic of October, and it's the magic of the baseball history. So, the Yankees could pull it out and make it to the World Series, or the Red Sox, or really anyone. So, it's anyone's game. Let's talk about the National League. So I said who the wild cards were. They were the Diamondbacks and Rockies. The Brewers ended up being one game out, and that's got to be devastating. However, the three top seeds, of course, were the Cubs, the Nationals, who, again, a team I said would end up coasting, and they finished strong. They were a good 20 games above the next person. Now, here we go. So, the Dodgers. 104 games. So, they didn't push for that record. However, they did end up getting the best overall record and home field throughout the playoffs. Now, the Diamondbacks and Rockies, as I've said, made it. They, the Diamondbacks could have won the National League Central. Uh... And that's a little scary. However, again, I expect probably the Dodgers to make it. How It doesn't surprise me if anyone else makes it. It's the magic of baseball, October season. And I look forward to hearing more and telling you guys next week more about the Major, major League Baseball's postseason. Now, some exciting news in the NFL. And the reason why it excites me is because it has to do with my Bears. Now, in the NFL, in the NFL, the Bears finally made the decision to start Mitchell Trubisky. Yes, you heard it here. Uh, obviously, Mike and Mike, all the big national news broke it last night. However, you heard me talk about it. Now, let's take my intake. So... The first issue I have with this move is it should have happened sooner. Uh, I know Mike Lennon was supposed to be a placeholder. Trubisky was supposed to be a third string, but he played better than Mark Sanchez, so he became the backup. Way, way to go. Uh, another thing was uh, in the preseason, Trubisky was very, very solid. He didn't throw picks, didn't do anything like that, and Mike Lennon did. Uh, and with this first four-game span, you saw, here's the stats I heard today, um, Mike and Mike, eight turnovers by Mike Lennon. 
He was involved in eight turnovers in the first four games. Now, on average, that's two, and that's still pretty bad. However, here's where he got fired. In their two close games, Atlanta and the win over the Steelers, he had one turnover. In the losses, both blowouts against the Packers and Tampa Bay, he had seven turnovers. Huge, huge mistakes. You can't justify him being the starter anymore. Especially now that after the Thursday night game, they have a long week because they play on Monday night against the Vikings, who just lost Delvin Cook. And maybe the Bears can salvage some wins for this season. And I am excited to see Trubisky start. He, again, he's a very solid guy. I love how he did the play action in the preseason. I love how he found the tight end a lot. Uh, for those who played Madden against me, you know that's how I play. I do rollouts. I do a lot of running. And I think this Bears team is set up perfectly for a run-first mentality followed by play action by Mitchell Trubisky. All you need now is some better wide receivers, which we'll hear more and more through the season. But I think they're on the right track. I could very well see the ship being set for a 6-10 and 10 year. Yes, 6-10. and 10. Uh, I mean, they're 1-3. That's saying Trubisky will go 5-7. Do I think he will? Hmm, I hope so. I could see him being like that, and I could see him being better than that, but it is what it is, and I don't think he's going to be a miracle worker. He is a rookie, after all. And not everyone could be Deshaun Watson. Holy smokes, everyone. Have you heard about this? The 57 points the Texans scored. Yes, they scored 57 points. First time... 50 mark was hit since 2000, and I believe 12. I'm going to double check that. But yes, the 50 point mark was hit again. Now, tell me, if you're looking at these rookies, Kaiser looks in disarray only because he has no time to throw, and he's in the same situation of no receivers. Uh, the only thing not going for him is the running game isn't even producing. So he's playing from behind, having to throw early, having to just make something happen. Now, looking, looking, let's see. 2015, sorry, it wasn't 12. Now, back to what I was talking about, the rookie quarterbacks. Watson, I thought, would have been the best choice out of these rookie quarterbacks only because I saw him as an experienced guy, Proven to play on the big stage. Did well for Clemson, both in a loss and a championship win over Bama. <coughs> or I should say against Bama. For some reason, the Bears took the gamble on Trubisky. Now, he looked great. He really, really did look great. And in all honesty, those... I'm going to look at the quarterbacks in the league. You have your Ben Roethlisberger, who never won a championship. You have Tom Brady, who never won a championship. You have Joe Flacco, who was a Division II quarterback. What I'm getting at is, yes, Deshaun Watson, very, very talented, very, very skilled. You look at championship, national champion quarterbacks, they have very short lives in the league because they haven't been producing lately. Now, back in the old days, I don't think this is a choice. However, I will have to do more digging on that for a future show or segment. But if you look in recent memory, your A.J. McCarrens, your even Cardale Jones isn't really doing anything currently, only because he's behind now, Phillip Rivers in Los Angeles for the Chargers. Uh, some other guys, Vince Young was a championship winning quarterback, and now uh, he's not even in the league. Is it wrongfully not in the league? Probably, in my opinion. He wasn't 
He wasn't terrible in the way some other quarterbacks were terrible. Now, AJ McCarron's in the league. He's a backup, highly sought out, sought after backup. And quite frankly, it's interesting to see he still hasn't gotten a chance. Uh, for Deshaun Kaiser, it's just another Browns quarterback getting the bumps and bruises of being the starter. And I know he's getting frustrated. It's He has a very good demeanor about him. Yes, he's frustrated, but he needs probably more time compared to the other two. And quite frankly, some Browns fans have mentioned on talk radio and other shows that Kessler has been doing very, very, or not Kessler, sorry, Hogan, Kevin Hogan has been doing very, very well, former Stanford kid, and they mentioned that he can move the offense down the field and score points where Kaiser has been struggling, and... I think the reason why Kaiser is struggling is because there's just no energy. There's just no, no one's protecting him. So when they do have to throw a pass, it's like third and 12, third and 15, because the running game just isn't getting going. Uh, I mean, even against the, the, I have to mention this too, the Colts, when the Browns were so close, I just don't get it. Like, they could be okay this year, but they're on four for a reason. And quite frankly, I'm not surprised. Excuse me. Uh, let's talk about Jacoby Brissett of the Colts. Now, your franchise quarterback goes down. You trade for a third string quarterback from the Patriots. And he's given life to this offense. Now, this last game against the Seahawks, yes, he pretty much died in the second half. Happens to the best of us. Uh, but if you watch that first half, man, watch him against the Browns, man. But some, I've noticed he has a very quick start to the games. The adjustments are made. And then he falls flat. He, nothing happens. So, interesting how that transpires. I, I think he'll be a good backup for a while. And quite frankly, it's something to look forward to in future franchises and free agency. Uh, another team of note I want to mention is the Patriots, only because of their defense. Now... This, it hurts me only because I had, I say had, because I'm planning to get rid of them. The Patriots defense in a league. And I thought, you know, these guys are going to be Patriots of old. They're going to be surprisingly good, and they're just going to do well. They are the worst rated defense this year so far through four games. And it's difficult to say two and two. For the Patriots, who everyone is talking, could they go undefeated? But you need a defense first. Because teams know if we get the ball last, we can beat the Patriots. Now, the Chiefs did really well against the Patriots. Which, by the way, the Chiefs, 4-0. Only team undefeated left. So those Dolphins have to wait. Yes, uh, the, oh, shoot, yes, I said it, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the 72, or is it 73, um, I'm pretty sure it's undefeated, let's look, Dolphins in 72, I was originally right, I shouldn't doubt myself. So, yes, they're the only team to go undefeated through the postseason also. So, the reason why we say that is because the Patriots a while back were 16-0. They ended up going, oh, let's see, it would be 18-1 because of the Giants. And that miraculous Super Bowl. 
Now, back on, oh man, where was I? <laughs> Patriots defense is terrible this year. Uh, Chiefs are great. Again, they've been surprisingly good for the last few years. Everyone writes them off and forgets about them, but they always come back and surprises you. Now, let's, now that I have some, oh, one last thing before I dive into fantasy football, which is what I was getting at. Uh, Danny Treviathan, he was handed a two-game suspension. Uh, he appealed it, got a one-game reduced, so now it's a one-game suspension for a hit on... Oh, why am I drawing a blank? I know his name. Uh, Drew, I'm drawing a blank, sorry. Oh, Devontae Parker, or Devontae Adams, sorry. Yes, Adams. So, again... It's okay. He's a great player. He didn't mean anything from the hit. Again, the the very good discussion I heard earlier today that Mike Greenberg kind of pushed down, and it pains me to hear him push the discussion down, is should running backs and offensive players be able to lower their head? Now, Greenberg has... So this is how the argument was. Greenberg would listen to his co-host today. He would say, it wasn't Golik, I forget the guy's name. However, here's how the discussion went. The co-host would complain that the offensive player lowers his head at the last second, even if he is, like, just in general. Greenberg would just say, just sounds like you're a defensive player complaining about the offense. And in truth, there's a little truth to it, but as an outsider, you have to think, well, let me scratch that. Not as an outsider, as a former football player who played both offense and defense. On offense, I tend to get low. I've been taught to get low. If I get low, I can run over people. Now, on defense, what are you taught? To square up and hit someone. Now, the issue with that is if someone gets low, or should I say lower than you, you get stood up and ran over. If you hit them in the head because they got low, it's not really fair to you because you're already in attack mode and they're still shrinking. Now, Greenberg's argument is you should be able to get lower and attack them. Now, that becomes another discussion of that's attacking the knees and the legs and we're seeing all these ACL tears and MCL tears and people just getting injured in general because of their legs and ankles and everything. Uh, I mean, football's at a point where are you going to be brutal? Are you going to be this aggressive sport or are you really going to doll the game down become basically seven on seven for the, the world to watch. And sadly, I'm one of those that would love to see it stay brutal, stay ferocious, but that's that's the adrenaline talking. That's not the safety concerns talking. Safety and concerns, seven on seven seems to be the way we're going. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, but that then doesn't make us pay... 300 plus size men, millions and millions to protect someone. <sighs> but let's move on to fantasy football. Yes, I, I, like I do have been for the last three weeks. I've been updating you on my ESPN leagues. And for this is the last week I'm going to disclose. I'm not talking about any of the NFL.com leagues I'm in, just ESPN. So let's go ahead and jump right in with, let's see who's first when I pull up the app. <laughs> yes, yes, that was a very lazy way of saying, which team can I start with? So let's start with the Northwest Ohio team that I have, the Byros Team Huskies. Uh, this week I played Bubba J. I was a little, maybe. In the end, I won 93-68. to 68. Now... Looking at the matchup, Dak performed for me. He had Aaron Rodgers. They're basically a push. 
Uh, he had Coleman of Atlanta, and I had Freeman of Atlanta. They were equal in the push. Uh, Jordan Howard and Jaquiz Rogers. I would say push, but this gives me the one point advantage because Rogers had a point advantage and Howard had two points. So there's one point. He gets a point lead because of Antonio Brown over the Marius Thomas. Stephon Diggs had nine, Cooks had three. So I get six. So that puts me up by five. Push at the tight end, Rudolph and Bennett. Amari Cooper didn't do anything. Ty Montgomery at least got two points. The Giants defense got zero. I had the Houston's defense, which just performed great. Gaskowski got me 15. Lutz got me nine. However, looking at this solid win uh, on the bench, Kelvin Benjamin would have been the only guy worth noting. And this puts me at a very solid 3-1. and one. Tied now with Bubba J, but getting the advantage because I won the head-to-head. -head. So what does that put me at this week in week 5 of fantasy football? Well, I play Team Phillips. Team Phillips is a 1-3 team. Uh, right now, he has one, two, three guys who are on buys. And how soon will he? I mean, I still have my kicker on buy. But the reason why my kicker's on buy is because I haven't got a new one yet. <laughs> uh, so let's move on. I mean, again, I should win. It's a very solid league this, so far this year. And I think I... I'm doing pretty well. So next league, of course, it's a prestigious league, the Astastic League. Uh, I like to always say prestigious because, quite frankly, it is. It really, really is. And two one and one the week, well, the week before this week, tying with my good friend Colton Short was wasn't a great feeling for me, only because that pushed me down out of playoffs. Uh, right now, I'm projected in playoffs, which I like to stay. However, this week is going to be tough, and I'll get to that moment. Let's talk about last week. So last week, I faced off against League Commissioner Keep, uh, Jordan Miller with the Keep Calm and Live McCaffrey. You know, play on words, live carefree, yeah. Uh, it was a dominating performance overall. 119.3 uh, over... 78.2. Uh, Breeze won the matchup against Wentz. Bell destroyed McCaffrey. Freeman destroyed Tate, Golden Tate. Uh, Demarius Thomas lost to Brandon Cook. Shocker there, because Thomas has been worthless. Uh, Eric Decker lost to Devontae Parker, because Decker has been worthless. Uh, Charles Clay balled out, but Travis Kelsey, of course, is going to beat him every time. Uh, Defensively, Jacksonville beat my New England defense, and the true MVP this week was Greg Zerling of the Los Angeles Rams, hitting seven field goals, two extra points for 27 points in this league, and it just makes me happy. Now on my bench, Frank Gore did well, uh, Dak Prescott did well, and of course Terry Cohen has been doing well. But looking at the Giants' defense, I need to get new defense in this league, and I'm pretty sure that's what I'm aiming towards right now. But let me double check. <laughs> and yes, I'm aimed towards defense, and we'll see how that works. Now, looking at this coming week, week five. Now, here's this kid is 4 0, brand new to this league. He's the young buck. I think it's Brody Miller. Oh, man. I feel bad if I didn't get his name right. Um, it is Brady Miller. <laughs> okay, Brady Miller. But you look at him, every week has been like 120, 120, 120, 163. Uh, the very first week was 
Only 96. I think that's his lowest scoring week. Yes, 129. 163. This last week, he got 125. And now he faces me. Highest scoring team in the league. Against the two-time defending champions. <laughs> now, what's interesting about this is Brady is the number one team in the Eden East, followed by Colton and me. And really, the bottom half needs... they will. I can see the old man who's Jason Miller and Taylor Stokes picking up some wins here and there. They try to catch up, but it's going to be a battle. Now, for the West, the most entertaining score last week for Week 4, only because it happened to me the week earlier, Straight Cash Homie and My Johnson Hurts tied at 96.7. Yes, they tied. Now, this league has seen very few ties in its day, but to see another one, is hilarious two weeks back to back and we're just now talking about going back to a tiebreaker now there's still time for the, a lot of teams here to do well but to see the young Brady Miller he has he will do fine he will adjust his lineup accordingly but to see what happens will be interesting nonetheless uh, the kid is right now projected not to win. He doesn't have everybody in. We'll see what happens. Now, the league, I know some of you on Facebook have asked about, talked about with me because you're in the league. The FFBL League. Yes, the Fantasy Football League. Now, as predicted, I lost. 108 to 89. I can catch you on the flip. Oh, man. Catch on the flip, sucko. <laughs> so how, what happened to me that was so devastating? Uh, Philip Rivers did well. Le'Veon Bell was pretty much the biggest thing. And Tennessee's defense getting negative four points was not helpful. Yep, that's pretty much it. Alex Smith could have played. Gave me ten more points. I still would have lost by nine. Yep, that was the only thing I could have probably changed. I still would have lost. <laughs> but it happens. And honestly, I know when I'm going to get beat. I know when things are going to happen. It's okay. I, I take losses very well. I adjust where I, need, where I need to, really. Now, in this league, I'm trying to get another kicker. Because, of course, Lutz is out this week. Uh, my opponent has two guys on a bye, Trevor Simeon and his Atlanta defense. Uh, Detroit is who he has. I might put Philly in because they're supposed to do well against the Arizona Cardinals. But Mr. Tom Brady is who I'm facing. Who is, ah, uh, man, I can't. Let me look at the standings. I'll tell me. Maybe it'll tell me his first name. <laughs> uh, Tyrone Finn. I'm facing you this week. Uh, your three and one team against my two and two. I I'm looking forward to another tough matchup in this league. That seems to be what I draw every week, and I'm okay with this. Uh, so that's all I have for the fantasy football. Again, very good leagues, very early on still. We'll be talking about it throughout, and I'm excited. Now, before I send off one of the, actually one of the groups I've been promoting, uh, Schmoogel House Productions, actually has a trailer out right now. Uh, definitely go check it out. It's for their Park Thorn series. Uh, it's a Nightwing story. Uh... It looks interesting. I'm a little excited about it. Um, been in talks with some of them around getting involved potentially, but it's going to be interesting, and I think it will be a fun venture for everyone. Uh, my cousin Zach Taylor, shout out to him. He's a 
credited writer for the show, and quite frankly, I'm proud to say he's on it as the writer, and definitely historian on the subject. <laughs> now, he may not be like the official historian, but I call him the historian. Let's go with that. Uh, again, I know I've said it a long time, anti-gaming, uh, the videos are going to get posted as soon as I get to them. Uh, that's the sad truth. The issue currently is what you see behind me, the house not being done. Uh, as you can see, things are getting done. So maybe even when the house is done, this program might pick up, might be a two times a week thing. We'll see, especially now that I've shortened it to a half hour. I think that works better and it allows me to just touch each subject very well and allows me to still grow in other areas like my actual paying job. <laughs> uh, closing thoughts. Again, I look forward to next time. Uh, I'm your host, Byro, and have a wonderful day. You burn me up, you burn me up, believer, believer.